Greetings Guardians, my name is Bife here. So for those of you that missed the season of the Splicer, you might also have missed the bit where the factions ceased to be. I wanted to write a script about the ramifications of that for the civilian population of the city and the political landscape of it all, but today I wanted to touch on something that we as Guardians all understand a lot better, the military aspect of that. As Guardians, it's our responsibility to actually fight the enemy in the field, and I think it's fair to say that we all sort of know that our chances are really not that great in this war that's coming. In short, we're facing up against a massive fleet of near indestructible pyramid ships with paracausal powers that probably exceed our own, as well as the dark armies of the Witness and whatever personal power it may hold, being the potential equal of the Traveler. If we want to have a hope to do anything, we need not only the Guardians and the raw resources needed to conduct war at a full scale, but also our allies and, if we're fighting in space, we're going to be needing a fleet. This is, however, something that, as it turns out, we've had at our disposal for some time, until this time last year. Today we're going to be talking about the fleet that is now lost to us, and what its fate might well be. So I'm sure many of you know that back when we could visit Saturn's moon of Titan, there was actually a massive number of Arrow-type ships and a few corvettes off on some of the landing pads that were near the New Pacifica Arcology. To be clear, this video is not about those ships. We actually have no idea what happened to this fleet of ships, and our best assessment is that it probably actually evacuated Titan alongside everyone else, with the exception of Deputy Commander Sloan. Regardless, these dogfighters and corvettes are not enough to make a stand against the Black Fleet alone. What we're going to need is a fleet of far greater magnitude. Enter the potential fleet that might save us, the fleet that has been talked about a lot more consistently in the lore, the Fleet of Dead Orbit. For those of you who played back during the season of the Splicer, you might remember that the factions all planned a coup to essentially overthrow the Vanguard. This was primarily instigated by the future war cult, but it'd be wrong to suggest that Dead Orbit wasn't also involved alongside New Monarchy. This is only highlighted further by the fact that they have also left the tower alongside the other faction heads. However, Dead Orbit also took their loyal faction members with them, as well as their key assets, and let me tell you, that is a problem for us. You see, Dead Orbit are fanatical above most other factions because their beliefs revolve around the idea that they need to survive at all costs, and that to do so, they need to build up a fleet to escape Earth and the Traveler, and effectively create a human exodus. Most people wouldn't be so happy to abandon civilization in its entirety and go full Battlestar Galactica, but Dead Orbit are already there with one foot in the door. This fleet that they have built as a result has been assembled from ships both old and new across hundreds of years in the Dark Age and City Age. It is one of the great assets of the city as far as both our Guardian and civilian populations are concerned, and they took it with them as best we know. Dead Orbit's fleet might be important not simply because of the fact that it provides us with the possibility of fighting in a pitched fleet battle, but also it provides the desperately needed capacity for human survival in the instance that we need to evacuate the lost city. If we do lose our footing within the city in Lightfall, then we're going to need to conduct such an evacuation because unlike the Red Legion, the Witness and its forces are unlikely to take prisoners or allow people to live under their rule. But herein lies the problem with the Dead Orbit fleet. Firstly, as was stated, we have limited intelligence to our disposal as to where it is. Secondly, we have the greater issue that, for the most part, there are certain actors within the city that have essentially disavowed the factions and would happily call them traitors and might refuse to work alongside them. But lastly, we have the biggest issue of all, which is who might be controlling the fleet now and who they might have been forced into an alliance with. This is where we're going to be once again talking about a little politics and the ramifications of Dead Orbit's failed coup. So let's talk about that first problem. Yes, the fleet is missing. Where might it be? Well, this is the bigger problem with trying to find a fleet. 
It's large, sure, and it's made up of lots of different vessels, but it's also mobile. They could conceivably be anywhere in the system, and if they've been able to take their fleet with them, they could be there and then quickly jump out. Now granted, it's questionable to believe that an entire fleet could be moved so quickly because it is a logistical task, but if there is any group that is already trained to do so, it's the Iraqs of Dead Orbit. And more importantly, they will be able to coordinate amongst their people with an ironclad discipline that I think the other factions might be lacking, given that this is their endgame situation and all of them potentially understand what's at stake. More importantly than all of that though, I think there is the bigger point to understand that keeping an entire fleet of ships afloat requires resources, and so there are limited numbers of places where they might be able to hide. I feel as though we might be able to locate them if we can find an anchorage of some sorts that they might be using as a consistent safe harbor. But again, this doesn't mean that they couldn't just abandon that place and jump to somewhere else in the system within moments. Near light speed drives allow them a remarkable degree of maneuverability in this instance, and so finding the dead orbit fleet might be trouble. However, there is also a problem here given that the fleet might actually be wandering straight into enemy territory. The worst case scenario is that the dead orbit fleet attempts to go and hide far out in the reaches of the system near the Jovians or beyond. Thus, having done so, they will have wandered into enemy occupied territory, in particular, territory that is now controlled decisively by the Black Fleet. If this is what they've done, then the fleet might already be lost, or as has happened with the Glycan, might have been corrupted by Egregor. But then again, that would require them to start communing with darkness, and much as Dead Orbit may have betrayed us, I don't believe there's anyone within their ranks that would attempt something so foolish. That is, however, also the truly worst case scenario, and I don't think that Dead Orbit is that stupid. They live as a fleet, in a certain sense, and they would have been aware of such threats. They would have been able to navigate around them, and more importantly, they might have gotten more information on the Black Fleet's movements than most. So it's not impossible that they would have been able to avoid detection from the Black Fleet and its agents. So what if we do locate them? What then? Our immediate goal would be to bring them back into our fold, but that seems a lot harder to do now given that they have been running an unsuccessful coup and have been exiled for it, and there are many people who would not so easily forgive that. Whilst the Vanguard might be willing to welcome them back in such circumstances, members of the city's civilian population might not. At best, there might be a great division once again within the city's civilian population, and there would be some that would side with the Vanguard and say that they should be forgiven, and others that would resent the traitorous factions who supported all of the activity that occurred during the Endless Night that brought about a Vex invasion. There may even be a third faction that aggressively opposes the Vanguard, but might aggressively attempt to uphold and reinstate Dead Orbit, these fanatical individuals that have been found within the city that were essentially whipped up into a frenzy by Lakshmi's, uh, shall we say, unsympathetic dialogue. That is putting it kindly, to say the least. It's also clear at this point that not all Guardians would support such a partnership, given that there were some who vehemently didn't stand for what the Dead Orbit Iraqs desired. There are also those who opposed the factions and their rhetoric during the coup, and focused predominantly on healing division instead of stoking it. Saint-14 was an excellent example of this, who rejected the monarchy's mantle of control and the idea that he might be the one to lead the city, and instead backed the current vanguard leadership. Then there are the greater implications of what our wider allies might think. I know for a fact that Marosov might see it as a sign of weakness, that alternative views are even tolerated in our society. Perhaps that's not surprising, considering that it's not even something she needs to consider. She enjoys a vocal and undying loyalty from her people, even if some of her decisions have been questionable in the past. Keitel has openly stated that such traitors should be expunged, but then again, she might be a little more sympathetic to our cause and to this idea, given that this identical situation is what was experienced at Toro Battle. But the greatest challenge would undoubtedly come from the Elixni of the House of Light. 
who still probably hold a great deal of resentment for the Lost City's treatment of them during the Endless Night. Mithrax the Lightkel is one who would be willing to forgive, but that does not mean that his entire house is willing to follow suit, and a division within the House of Light would be disastrous for our allied front. Finally, I think we need to talk about this last problem, the scary possibility of what the Dead Orbit fleet is really doing at the moment, and more importantly, who they're serving. You see, by fleeing into the wilds, it's entirely possible that they are willing to cut all ties to the Lost City and never return. They in particular would be well placed to simply begin their exodus. They might already be gone, and they might have left us to die. If that is the case, it does make me wonder how Arak Shalal has been able to commune with Ikora Ray in some of the hidden transcripts that we've been able to attain in Witch Queen, but also it is worth wondering nonetheless, because, again, remember, the faction heads as a whole are still important figures as far as many people in the city are concerned. But then again, if they did stay behind, that might be even more dangerous for us. Sure, they could have just left us to die, but by sitting around, they've potentially played into one particularly menacing figure's hands. That of a certain exiled faction leader called Lysander. Lysander is something of a myth in Destiny lore terms. He was once the ruler of a faction called the Concordat, whose symbol is a closed fist raised in opposition, painted in black and green and surrounded in a circle. Lysander rose against the Speaker and was struck down by the new monarchy and its guardians at Bannerfall before fleeing into the wilds. It's not clear why exactly Lysander and the entirety of his Concordat rebelled, but it is worth remembering that he saw some kind of division within the city. What I would say even more importantly though, is that records from this time are one-sided and incomplete, so it's worth remembering that we might not have the whole story as to what truly happened and what the Concordat really wanted. Either way, Lysander is said to have been plotting his return for some time. We got hints at this back in Destiny 1 in Rise of Iron. That was six years ago almost. We know now that Lysander is clearly some kind of smooth operator if he's been able to survive in the wilds for this long. And, as any smooth operator will know, chaos breeds opportunity. The sudden exile of the factions and the availability of their assets is sure to have been noticed by Lysander. I want you to imagine for a second the terrible possibility of the Dead Orbit deciding to side with a traitor for their own survival. Imagine then the dark hour of our last city, when a Dead Orbit fleet rises in opposition and a coup is born again, with Lysander at its head and the aim of taking down the Vanguard once and for all and instating Lysander and the Dead Orbit fleet as the new military rulers of the Lost City and all of humanity. It's not clear how he would easily do this, given that the power of Guardians is absolute, but it is fair to say two things. Firstly, the Red Legion taught us well that Guardians are not all that is needed to fight against an invading fleet. It is possible for fleet assets to outmaneuver individual Guardians on the ground by the sheer volume of assets that can be deployed. And more importantly, Lysander seems to have his own Guardians in his disposal. The reason I say this? Back in Destiny 1, in Rise of Iron, you could acquire a sparrow specifically gifted to you from Lysander known as Lysander's Cry, and it essentially says as much, stating that he is tempting Guardians to his side with gifts. If there are Guardians that serve him in a coup to take down the last city's administration, it could be disastrous for all involved. Not to mention, the chaos that this will breed will breed an opportunity for the Witness. An opportunity to strike the city at its weakest, when all of humanity is at war. It's not clear what will happen to the Lost Fleet, it's not clear if they will even be mentioned again, but I do believe that they will inevitably become a significant plot point at some moment in time, whether it's by the nature of their absence, by the grace that they might provide us in a moment of evacuation, or by the pain they will cause in a moment of betrayal. Either way, 
We should be hunting for this fleet. No matter what the scenario is, we need to find them. And if Dead Orbit can be brought back into our fold, maybe they can help save us. Or maybe, at best, they can turn the tide. But Lysander is also out there, and he is the wild card that no one has been playing on. If he moves at some point soon, who knows what could happen? That's all from me for now. Thank you so much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, go ahead and leave a like. Thank you so much for all of the recent support on all the videos. I'm so glad that you guys have been enjoying them so much. You can expect more Destiny coverage rolling up to the new season, and that interesting Bungie livestream that's going to be revealing Lightfall and beyond. The Destiny 2 showcase is going to be an interesting one. I can't wait to see what we're going to have revealed to us. In the meantime, though, know that your viewership, as always, is quite enough for me. And that my name has been, my name is Bife. Parodasia Arastra. I'll see you, Starside.